Hello, this is X-Ray Bob back, and we're going to go over some kind of math problems that you might have with radioactive decay. So we can call this radio de radioactive decay math, or half-life math, or get-a-life math. All right, so two formula, one formula that you might want to memorize is that the current radioactivity equals the original radioactivity times one half raised to the n, where n is the number of half-lives that occurred during the decay from r0 to r. This formula over here, n equals log radioactivity divided by radioactivity originally divided by log one half, is uh, just a restatement of this easier to memorize formula and is sometimes useful given the kinds of problems you're having. All right, so we'll start with problem type one, which will be a percentage type problem. So the question is, after four half lives have expired for any radioactive substance, what percent of radioactivity remains? Now, I know a lot of you don't like math, and a lot of these problems I have two ways to do. One is by just generating a table, and that's probably what you're going to use more frequently. And the other is by using your calculator and doing your math. And one suggestion is to do it both ways, because that's a good way to check that you got the right answer. All right, so let's start by building our table. We'll put half-lives expired on the left and percent remaining on the right. So initially, no half-lives have expired, and we've got 100% of our radioactivity. After one half-life, we'll have only 50% of our radioactivity remaining, because by definition, a half-life is the amount of time it takes for your radioactivity to drop in half. After a second half-life, we'll drop in half again, and 50% will drop to 25%. After a third half-life, we'll drop in half again to 12.5%, and after a fourth half-life, we'll drop to 6.25%. If you stop here, you might not get credit. Please circle your answer so it's painfully obvious for me to find. So the correct answer for this problem would be 6.25%. Now problem type 1% at done the math way would use the formula. So we would start out by plugging in r equals 100% times 1 half raised to the 4, because it says in the question what percent remains after 4 half lives, so n equals 4. We can expand it to say 100% times 1 half to the 4 is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, or 1 16th, and 100% times 1 16th comes out to be, you guessed it, the same answer, 6 and a quarter percent remaining. Now, problem type 1 might come without a percentage and give you values of activity. So let's try this one. You measure 500 microcuries coming off a sample of absurdium. After three half-lives of decay, how much radiation will your sample of absurdium be emitting? Again, let's first do it the table method. We'll build our table, but now there's another column. We added activity remaining. So at no half-lives, We've got 100% of the activity remaining, so we're at 600 microcuries. After one half-life, we've only got 50% remaining, and 50% of 600 is 300, so 300 microcuries. After two half-lives, we've only got 25% left, so we're down to 150 microcuries. And after that third half-life, we're down to an eighth, so we've only got 75 microcuries, and that would be the answer. To do this with the formula, we'd have to remember the formula and we'd plug in 600 microcuries is the original radioactivity, 3 is the number of half-lives, so that goes in for n, and we'd plug that in, we'd have 600 times 1 half to the third, 1 half to the 3, which is the same as 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is the same as 1 eighth, so 600 divided by 8, or 600 times 1 eighth, comes out to be 75 microcuries, same answer. All right, so now let's go on to type 2, which is a little harder. Now we've got a sample of 800 microcuries of Connecticut pelletarium with a half-life of three hours, and the question is how radioactive will it be after half a day? So that's 12 hours. So we'll build our table and we'll add a fourth column. We've now got half-lives expired, time expired, percent remaining, and activity remaining. So initially, nothing's expired. 
uh, no times expired, where it got 100% of it, and it's 800 microcuries. After one half-life, three hours have expired. Oh my, I forgot units. I should have had units in that column. 50% remaining, and 400 microcuries is how much activity is remaining. After another half-life, six hours have now expired. We've got 200 microcuries left. After another three hours, we've got three half-lives expired, nine hours on the clock, and now we're down on 100 microcuries. So after four half-lives, each half-life three hours, we're at 12 hours, that's half a day, we've got 6.25% remaining, so 50 microcurie is the answer. All right, let's do it with our calculators the math way. We remember our formula, R is what we're gonna be solving for, R0 is the original radioactivity, N is, ah, N is not obvious, it's not in the question. Don't put three in for N, that's three hours, uh, that's not the half-life. So let me give you one more formula. Time elapsed equals the half, time per half-life times the number of half-lives. So the total time elapsed equals the time per half-life times the number of half-lives. So here we've got 12 hours is the total time that elapsed, half a day, and we've got three hours per half-life, because they told us the half-life is three hours, so we're gonna solve for N, which would be how many half-lives of three hours per half-lives would it take in a 12-hour period. So 12 hours divided by three hours per half-life results in four half-lives. Now we can go back to our formula, and we know to put one half raised to the four, not one half raised to the three, that was a, a ruse. And so 800 microcuries times one half to the four is the same as 800 times one half times one half times one half times one half, or 800 times 1 16th, or 800 divided by 16, giving us 50 microcuries. All right, and we'll circle it, make it obvious, so our instructor can't possibly be mistaken. All right, problem type three. It's getting a little harder. A meteor lands on your car on your way to school at 6 a.m. Boy, you were going to get in early. And is measured to be emitting radioactivity at 32 microcuries. Oh, millicuries, excuse me. Units are important. After a full day of school, you get back to your car at 4 p.m. and it's only emitting one millicurie. Calculate the half-life. All right, so let's scoot that over to the right and build a table. Half-lives, percent remaining, activity remaining. So it's zero half-lives, we've got 100% remaining, it's at 32 millicuries. And one half-life, we got 50% remaining. I don't know how long that half-life was, but I know one half-life expired and I'm down to 16. After a second half-life, I'm down to eight. After a third half-life, I'm down to four. After a fourth half-life, I'm down to two. And after a fifth half-life, I'm down to one millicurie. Okay, so now I know five half-lives have expired for me to drop from 32 millicuries down to one millicurie. That's not the answer, don't stop there. You're not done with this problem because it's asking what is the half-life, not how many half-lives expired. So we got our formula, time elapsed equals, the total time elapsed equals the time per half-life times the number of half-lives that expired for that amount of decay. We know n equals five, five half-lives occurred. Uh, time elapsed, we can calculate by subtracting the 4 p.m. 6 a.m. from 4 p.m. and figuring out how much time, so it was 10 hours that you were at school. All right, now we can pop that into the equation. 10 hours is the total time elapsed. Five half-lives expired. We now can calculate that our half-life is 10 hours divided by five. Each half-life must be two hours. So now we can circle that because that's the answer to the question. All right, if we were to do that with math, we'd have to pull out that rearranged formula where n equals log of radioactivity now divided by original radioactivity over a log of a half. All right, and we can plug our numbers in directly. n equals log of two millicuries divided by 32 millicuries. That whole thing divided by log of a half gets us to five pretty quickly, faster than the table did, but whatever you're comfortable with. So now we'd go back to the formula up here and we'd plug and chug with 10 hours and five half-lives and we'd end up getting the same answer, two hours per half-life. Okay, 
So you're going to have two types of problems, one where I give you the half-life, one where you calculate the half-life. I could give you the half-life and ask you to calculate the total time elapsed. Um, those are kind of spins on the problems, right? Because I can give you any two of, of these three variables, time elapsed, half-life, and n, and you can calculate the third. All right. All right, so this is X-Ray Bob out, hoping you can plug and chug your way through the math or build yourself some tables to comfortably get through my torturous problems.